am so excited. I can't believe it's an actual book. <laughs> I did that. Because <laughs> I read that, you know, when you were a kid, your aim was to be a children's author. Yeah. So when you came to write this first children's book, what did you decide it was going to be about? Introduce us to it. Well, um, growing up, I loved writing and reading so much and I couldn't run and I couldn't talk quickly, but I could write. Um, and I loved reading, but never in any other books I read was the main character disabled. And I had a great and lovely childhood, but I think in hindsight it affected me because I started to believe that as a disabled person, I couldn't be the main character or the hero of the story. And I absolutely can. And as an adult, I, I look back at myself as a child and I thought if I could have read a story where the main character had a disability but it didn't affect the world it would have given me so much confidence to go out there and just to be me. As well as that, I didn't want to ignore the extra problems and hurdles you face as a disabled child things that I went through of like just seeing how much you need help, accepting support when you need it, knowing the difference between a friend and a carer, embracing your difference and your disability but not letting it stand in your way. So yeah, it would feel um, disingenuous for me if I were to write a book where the main character is disabled and then go, her life is perfect because actually even in 2021, if you got a disability, your life will be harder. And when you were Edie's age, when you were growing up, what did you think, like, career-wise was, was possible? And, and for you, how hard is it to kind of... How hard has it been to be what you, you can't see out there already, to be kind of making those strides yourself? That's it. It was tricky for me when I was Edie's age because it was the late 90s and I didn't really see myself portrayed in the media and when disabled people were on there they were always a victim and I'm not a victim um, 
and I always had a dream to be a writer. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, but in hindsight now, I think I chose the job of a writer because in my head, it would be writing in my childhood bedroom at my parents' house in Bridlington. They could still look after me because I never saw the image of a disabled person leaving home moving to London and then beyond I, I don't think in my wildest dreams would I have thought that I could be a comedian so um, although the career of a writer sounds big and grand. I chose it because I could do it from the wood I already knew. So the fact that 20 years later I can be independent and live 200 miles away from my parents. I don't think in my wildest dreams I could have ever expected this, but I hope that disabled people in 2021 can read this and watch the telly and realise that they can be and do whatever they want to. Another thing that Edie in the book is going to come up against in her life, not giving too much away, is intersectionality. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that kind of notion of people wanting to put you in one box, but actually... I mean, if you have to be in a box at all, you'd be in loads of them. Yeah, um, yeah. And so what has that been like for you with people's perception, maybe that you only fit in one box and actually you're lots of other different yeah. things? That's it. I feel like because I sound disabled, I am very quick to be put in that disabled box. Um, even now people view disability as a personality trait. Mm. You'd be like, oh, who is she? She's disabled. And then give nothing else away. And definitely for me growing up, intersectionality was a big thing because I had feelings for girls and in hindsight, I knew I was a gay from being four years old, but as a child and a teenager and quite late into my twenties, I thought I'm not gay, I'm disabled because I felt that if I were to say hello, I'm gay and I'm disabled, it would be too much on society and people's heads would explode. And it's because 
I never saw anybody like me and I thought I didn't have the space to embrace all the versions of me. Like, I am disabled, I am gay, I am a woman, but I'm also funny and stubborn and competitive and jealous and there's so many different traits of my personality that have nothing to do with that and nothing to do with my disability or my sexuality. So when I was right in ED, I really wanted to bring that out in her, in that, yes, people might put her in the disability box, but actually, that isn't her. There's so many other amazing boxes that she fits into. And in writing this book, we mentioned at the top that you always wanted to be a children's author. So who, when you were writing it, but also when you were growing up, who are your biggest children's author inspirations? <sighs> Without a doubt, Queen Goddess, hero, Jacqueline Wilson. I think I had all of her books and they're still all lined up on my bookcase at home. And I think, especially in the 90s, she was doing something that no other author was in that. It felt real. She was speaking about characters in care homes or from broken homes or with single mums and that was so refreshing to go from Narnia which is literally a fantasy land and um, stepping into a wardrobe and not finding Narnia the Jacqueline Wilson Bush never spoke down to you mm. as a child and it felt like real life. So yeah, she is amazing. <laughs> um, well, this has been such a pleasure to chat to you about the amazing Edie Eckhart. I'm really excited for it to come out, and thank you so much. Thank you, it has been lovely.